my name is James O'Brien. I'm the Operations Director at iIntro, and I'm joined today by Skip Freeman, uh, who's the owner of Hire to Win. Uh, so thanks for joining us today, Skip. Um, why don't you just tell us who you are and what you do? Well, thanks, James. Um, I'm the one of the managing partners of the HTW Group, with HTW standing for Hire to Win. And we are a five-person firm here in Atlanta, Georgia, USA, focusing primarily on two niches, one being the specialty chemical industry, and the other is a new niche that we're moving into with the uh, U.S. economy as well as the global economy getting better. Commercial construction is, is a fast-growing segment. So I want to share with everyone that I, joining iIntro has actually been uh, a journey, and the decision to go with iIntro was quick and fast, but it's the two-year journey up to this point that I think uh, w will bring a lot of value to the conversation today. And it actually kind of started 2010 when I was um, – the depths of the recession, you had to make every energy you count. Uh, a lot of people needed, obviously, jobs. Companies weren't hiring. So when you did get somebody in front of a hiring manager, boy, you had to make sure it worked. So one of the things I did, I was sitting at my desk one day and I said, I need to write an article on how to interview well. And I, I got it out there, started getting it to, uh, to my candidates and would use that as a guideline for prepping them. And then I wrote another article on uh, the counteroffer and resignation, and then another article, and then another article. And next thing I knew, uh, I had uh, 30, 40 articles, and I was uh, sitting at my desk one day and went, huh, I think there may be something here for a book. And so actually in 2010, published a book called Headhunter Hiring Secrets, which went on, and, and, and I'll connect the dots in a moment as the conversation progresses, it's actually part of the core foundation of where I am today is this book because it connected me with someone whom I'll sh share with you about in a minute. But um, the book has gone on to be a number one bestseller in Amazon in the job hunting genre, sold over 53,000 copies now. Today it stays in about the top 50 to top 75, but that's one thing I uh, most people don't know. It's a very it, it was a fun journey to write the book. But what were the challenges of both building a desk and building a team, Skip? It um, started in 2003. We were in the United States. Uh, I'm not sure how it was. Uh, uh, we weren't as global in 03 as we are today. So we were just coming out of at least the United States recession. Yeah. So 03, when I started, was a tough year. Um, hunkered down, uh, had to borrow some money to keep things going, but by the end of 2003, I built about $60,000. So going into 2004, things began to, to pick up, and 2004 and five were great uh, solo years. I built a 380-something thousand, one year 400-something thousand, uh, uh, one of those two years. So by 2006, I began to say, okay, now I can build a business. So Half of 03, 04, and 05 was learning how to build a desk, a practice to, to identify my market. And I became quite, quite good at it. And 06 and 07 were my two best years in the business. Uh, in fact, in 07, I built $681,000 uh, that year. Yeah. And I had hired up to seven people. In fact, had so much business coming in that the people I hired, I just focused them on recruiting. Right. And then when the bottom fell out, nobody knew how to develop business except me. So we went in 07, and the first half of 08, we'd gone from just me up to seven. And then by uh, early 09, it was back down to two because I, I either had to let people go or they quit on their own because we couldn't bring in the business. So part of the journey was learning how to build the desk the second was learning how to build the business and when you bring people on the skills you need to teach them yeah. as we came out of the recession uh, 2011 12 and 13 were good years and then 2014 things began to fall apart again which has led us to to this conversation today uh, 11 12 and 13 the economy was heating up people were hiring 
LinkedIn then was beginning to uh, really take hold. And by 2014, next thing I knew, contingency search was becoming a race to the bottom. Speed, price, and no value. And I was finding that... Sorry to cut across. I'm sorry, James, did you, had you start to say something? Contingent? Had you always been doing contingent recruitment in those years between 2003, 2004 and 2014? Exactly, and that is the MRI model of taking a uh, most placeable candidate, an MP to market, marketing the candidate, and then the client would say, well, we don't need this, we need that. You take the job order, and okay. I would say I probably filled one out of three searches, but suddenly by 2014, we were filling one out of five, one out of six, and a lot of other recruiters uh, were in the market. Yeah dropping the price of some, sometimes a client would hit me with, uh, you know, we pay 15% to other search firms, will you do it at 15%? Well, and if I didn't take the business, I didn't have any business, so the answer was yes, and the business was going from being very enjoyable to actually almost dreading getting up every day and coming back into the business, and, uh, and so it was 2014 when this new journey began where I'm going, I love this business. Now I hate this business. What am I going to do? Right. And what, where, was the, where was the defining moment for you? I mean, what, what things, I mean, were, the challenges, what are the challenges you're facing? Was it just purely, was it the fact that the business was starting to, you just fell out of love with it? Or how, how was it manifesting? It, it, it was the commodity. Great question. It was the commoditization of the business. Uh, sure, everybody would give you a job order, yeah. and so and they were given that job order to five other firms. All of a sudden, with LinkedIn, everybody's finding the same people, and it, and it just you'd work so hard <laughs> for nothing. Yeah. And um, and, and I had hired some additional people. It was by 2014 that we got up to the five that we have today. But this is where I'm going to – I have not learned all of this on my own. I, I want to share this with everyone. It's um, – one of the things I learned early in life, and particularly in the Army, was I never lose. I either win or I learn. And – I want to learn from people who have been down that path before me. So actually, and I'm going to start sharing some uh, some names here. It's interesting that I would say uh, there are four people who, and I don't know all of them personally, but there are four people that have got me to where I am today. And interestingly enough, three of the four are not in the United States. So the first person is Terry Edwards. I'm sure a lot of people in the listening audience know of Terry. And uh, I coached, or excuse me, I was coached by Terry for about six months, loved his program. And one of the things he told me, he said, Skip, if you don't believe clients will give you a retainer, you're absolutely right. And so it was through Terry, he first challenged me to begin to think about retained search. Right. But I didn't embrace it in 2014. Then um, I heard a webinar looking at my notes here, by Mark Whitby. And Mark was talking about some search firms he was working with who had uh, blown the ceiling off their business by offering a one-year guarantee on the candidates. Yeah. I'm going, how on earth can you give a one-year guarantee? I mean, uh, at, by this point in time, MI, during the recession, People had gone up to 60, 90, even 120-day performance guarantees, and now everybody in the MRI network is talking about squeeze that back down, squeeze it back down, get down to a 30-day guarantee. And here I hear Mark Whitby go, a one-year guarantee. How do we do this? But it is a fascinating, unique, value-added selling proposition. So I began to investigate that, James, and... Um, so the next person I became a student of is Lou Adler. And in fact, um, to learn how to do retained search and high-level searching, two of the next names I'm going to mention are, are key to this. Uh, so Lou Adler wrote the book, The Essentials, The Essential Guide for Hiring and Getting Hired. Yeah. And I also attended a Lou Adler um, course 
And, um, and in that, he basically was teaching us that, that basically um, A players are going to go to the company because of four things. Number one, it's a great job. Yeah. We have an engaged hiring manager. You have a knowledgeable recruiter. And you have a comprehensive search process. So Terry is challenging me to think about retain search. Mark Whitby's webinar says a one-year performance guarantee. Lou Adler brings up these four points with the comprehensive search process. Yeah. So I'm beginning to put things together. OK, what's this comprehensive search process? How do we differentiate ourselves from other firms? And so this goes back to what I shared a moment ago about headhunter hiring secrets, because in writing that book, another book had come out just at that time called Guerrilla Marketing for Job Hunters by uh, an author and a recruiter up in Canada. Yeah. Wall Street Journal calls him the rogue recruiter. His name is David Perry. So I picked the phone one day, called David. He took my call. I introduced myself, and David and I began uh, to communicate, talk, uh, and still to this day, talk uh, uh, every two or three months for a little bit and catch up. He does nothing but retain churches, and I learned that he offered a one-year performance guarantee. And oh, by the way, Lou Adler did as well. So now I've got Mark Whitby, Lou Adler, and David Perry all talking about the one-year performance guarantee. So it was in 2015 that I attempted my first retained search. One of the things that fascinates me, Skip, is obviously, um, you know, Mark, Terry, Lou, talking about that one-year performance guarantee. And it's one of those things that intrigued me, first of all, when I, when I started looking at this three, four years ago. And it, it sort of, you know, the contingent recruiter in me who who lived on, you know, a 12-week guarantee uh, or performance guarantee was, was thinking, well, wow, you know, somebody's giving 12 months and, and I'm sort of, worrying about giving 12 weeks. But then when you really dig into it, and, and, I, and I have this conversation now with every recruiter that I meet when I actually sort of help them um, understand more about the iintro system. I ask the question, you know, if you, I mean, many people don't track the, how long their, their, their candidates stay in place, but their, their gut feel, you know, I ask them for their, you know, how long do people that you place stay in the job? And surprisingly, most, most good recruiters say, well, mine are there for one, two, three, four years. So, if that's what you know, why wouldn't you give a 12-month performance guarantee? Because you've got nothing to lose. You're giving away um, what is perceived value to the client, which has got a, a great value to you as a recruiter because it, it helps. It's not unique, but it does help differentiate you from an awful lot of recruiters are out there who are worried about this 12-week. So that reaction from MRI, you know, you know, retrench, retrench, and bring that back, I think, you know, why? I mean, it's one of those things that fascinated me when I sort of um, came, came onto that. Let's just carry on your journey, Skip, now, um, because, you know, in terms of you, you talked there about uh, the challenge, you, challenge you've had in business, and I'm sure a lot of us, uh, you know, the, the story that you'll have will um, regrettably resonate with a number of us in terms of having the, the highs and the lows um, that you've had, and sometimes nice. down to the economy, but sometimes we need that wake-up call, and that wake-up call is when you, the realisation sometimes that as a contingent recruiter, you, you're often working, you know, and winning one out of five, you know, one out of three when it's really good. Sometimes it's worse than one out of five. And that realization that, uh, you know, we're not being paid um, for 80% or more of our work, it sort of, it makes you question your, uh, you know, why we're doing this. And I think that's sort of where you hit. But was there anything else that uh, brought you or started to help you reach that journey where you need to look out and do something different in 2015 where you picked up that one piece of work? Is there anything else that sort of spurred you on to, to start the journey of looking to do something different? And, and it did. Um, we know in this business that it's a combination of quality and quantity, and that if you have a process, it, it is going to uh, average out over the long term. And up through 2015, I had always had a scenario of when a candidate went to the final interview, I had exactly a 50-50 probability of closing the deal. So we get somebody to a final, and one out of two are going to close. In the 
there was a period from the end of 2014 through uh, the first part of 2015 where, James, I had 23 out of 28 people go to final interview that fell apart. Wow. So <laughs> 28, I should have had 14 placements. Well, we I made five. And, and so I was questioning the, my sanity. I was questioning everything. Wow. And, uh, and that comes back to the – it has since um, – it started evening out again because finally I had a run of where I closed like seven out of eight. Yeah. So that law of averages was coming back into play. But this is when I screamed enough. And so it, it actually – the trigger got pulled in September of 2015 mm -hmm. when marketing a candidate to a chemical company and the uh, vice president said yes we need some help we need a, um, uh, a plant manager yeah. we only pay 20 percent and we want a one-year guarantee yeah so now suddenly the client is hitting me with 20% and a one-year guarantee. And I go, okay, so I've now heard Mark and Lou and David Perry talk about the one-year guarantee. So I, I, I responded to the uh, vice president. I said, tell me, why do you want a one-year guarantee? And he said, we just had somebody leave that a recruiter brought to us. They were here four months. Their guarantee was 60 days. We paid that recruiter a lot of money. Now we don't have that employee anymore, so we're not going to use any recruiting firm unless they give us a one-year guarantee. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I kind of rose up inside of myself, and I said, sure, we can do that. In order to do that, we need to secure this search, work together, make sure there is uh, the right fit both in terms of hard skills and soft skills, yeah. and I can give you the one-year replacement policy if we can agree that up front uh, we'll secure this process with a $5,000 down payment. And he said, well, let me think about it. Call me back in a couple of days. So I put a, a little email together, sent it to him, and two days later I had a 20% with a five, he said, send me the invoice, $5,000 down, one-year guarantee. Yeah. So that was my first of just uh, stepping up and into, okay, you want this from me? Well, this is what I need from you. We need, we need this mutual commitment. Now I, I've secured the search. So once I learned about iintro and, and got exposed to it uh, through Plum and, and, and you, James, the decision was easy because of the journey I'd been on before. Now, I didn't know what all the right answers for retained search were. So here I'm, uh, I'm beginning to become a believer in assessments and the power of what that can bring. Okay. How do you sell the candidate? I would tell the candidate, let's, let's say, James, you're the candidate. I'll go, well, James, you know, it sounds like from what you're telling me, this might be a good career opportunity worth uh, uh, an exploratory conversation. Is that right? Yes. We go through some of that. Now we're getting to the point where they're going to go interview. And I'll tell the candidate, you know, it is as important for you to know you're going to a company where you're going to feel comfortable, where there's a good cultural and team fit for you, just like the client wants to know you are right for them. Wouldn't you agree? And they would say, yeah, I fully agree. I've got a tool that can help us get beneath the surface, help you know, could this be a good cultural and team fit? It's an assessment. It's not a test. There are no right or wrong answers. Let me send you a link to the assessment. It takes about 30 minutes to do it. I will send you a copy of the report, and you're going to learn a lot about yourself. It's great for uh, your own self-development. And you will know whether or not this could be a good cultural and team fit because if it's not, I'll let you know and we'll go, thank goodness we dodged that bullet. Yeah. And they will agree. And that's how I have learned, not on day one, but learned through a number of these how to frame the assessment to the benefit of the candidate. And so part of the confirmation I was on the right track was when – I discovered that I intro part of its power is the assessment as well. So that's where I wanted to connect that dot real quick.
now that you're a client of iintro what what were your reservations absolutely uh, the as the segue into that let's go back to the comment I'd made earlier about having written Headhunter Hiring Secrets, I then reached out to David Perry. We began to talk. And then um, back in, in 2015, he said, Skip, I'm authoring a new book. Would you be a, a proofreader of the book for me and make comments on the book as a reviewer? Yeah. I said, sure. So he sent me the draft. And it's a book called Hiring Greatness. And what David did is he wrote out in this book how he does a retained search. So this book, Hiring Greatness, if you're like me and don't know how to do a retained search, this is almost the manual. And he wrote it because it, it, it's a very – what, what we do is a lot of clients don't think it's hard, <laughs> but we know it is. So he wrote the manual on how to do a retained search, yeah. and in this I learned that he provides the client a proposal. He provides to the candidate a very detailed brief of the job. Interestingly enough, he calls it a position profile, a 10 to 15 page document. So I bring that up because here we have iintro as a platform for doing retained search, my reservations were, okay, is this a gimmick? Is this a, what's it going to cost? Uh, is there value here? And so the things that, again, what made iintro such a quick and easy decision was as I studied it, there's the assessment. So that validates the part. I'd already been on the journey. I'd started writing a proposal when I was um, talking to a client about a retained search. That concept is in the iintro methodology. A position profile, that concept is in the iintro methodology and you guys templates for that. So what iintro did was it validated a lot of these steps in the process. So my reservations coming into it were more, here's what I've learned, here's the year journey, year and a half journey I've been on in terms Cane search, yeah. uh, get my nose bloody, my teeth kicked in, where I've had successes and failures. So now, at least I'm going to check out iintro. How easy is the software going to be? How much is it going to cost? Is it a gimmick? Is it going to tell me different methods than what I have already learned? So th these are those were the reservations. And what was it that persuaded you finally to engage with iintro? Because yeah, and I know obviously you had a look at it, but what was what what brought you over the line? The fact that it mirrored the methodology I had learned between the assessments, David Perry's book, Hiring Greatness, and I go, okay, it's validating the process, and the software is very easy to use, yeah. and. In, in terms of cost effectiveness, <laughs> I have spent more money on many other things out there than I have iintro for much less effectiveness. So I was very pleasantly surprised uh, at the cost effectiveness of it. So that's really what brought me over was once I saw it, it was easy to use, cost effective, and validated a process. It had already taken me a year and a half to 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 experiment with and learn, that's what I would like to share with everybody is that what David Perry's book has in it, what Luther talks about, the, the assessments, the position profiles, everything, that works. That's how I've learned how to be successful in retained search and all iintro does was encapsulate all of that for me. So the learning curve I can share with everybody is going to be significantly reduced by by what James uh, James provided a, a, an extensive two day training session for me that what these guys are presenting and what they've packaged and put together for us is is in essence a collation of what I took a year and a half to learn on my own and here they are handing it out to us uh, in a system 
and again, I love the phrase that you guys use, Jane, methodology combined with technology, and, and it really, it, it's sweet. Well, I too, like you, I love the phrase, you know, technology with method or methodology with technology. But also what we've tried to do is digitize the search process and take, you know, encapsulate all the learnings from, from uh, the search process that uh, many, many great people have taken years to document and actually help recruiters have some structure and process behind to, to give, help give you that confidence that um, you know, when you when you asked uh, for that, that first 5,000, I know it wasn't when you were part of our intro, um, but it's sort of, you know, you were sort of almost got backed into a corner. If he wants something from me, I want I want something from him. He wanted the one year guarantee. So you wanted some uh, reference that, you know, I'm at least going to get paid for doing some of this work. And I think that's where, you know, where, where it sort of takes it to, to bring through. And that's what needs to, to come out with people. And that, our, part of our role at, at our intro is to help um, help recruiters, help recruitment business owners actually, you know, with some of that part. But tell me, you know, in the first, because obviously you've not been with us that long. I mean, we should talk that I think you and I, I think we trained in between Christmas and New Year. So you've not been with us. Correct. Yes, yes. So, so, so tell me, tell me about uh, the benefits that you got from my intro in the first 30 days or so, or, or what you felt were the benefits. Uh, absolutely. So the year and a half journey, I'm still kicking tires. I'm still going, are the assessments the right thing to do? It, it takes time to these position profiles and to write a position profile, yeah. you've got to take a great search assignment and that can take an hour. And then when clients go dark on you, you're going, what's going on? So what I intro did for me was by validating that every part of the process I had learned was correct. It gave me the confidence I needed to ask for a retainer going back to 2014 when Terry Edwards said, if you don't think your clients will give you a retainer, you're right, they won't. It gave me the confidence now to step into and ask every single client. And I think it's important. So ask for a retainer, well, that's easy, you say. Well, how do you do it? How do you position this? Uh, and that's what I struggled with. Came up with an idea, and this is what enabled me to, uh, with, with two clients, five searches, and flipped another one. So I actually have six engaged searches now. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and the way I learned to approach it was, if I'm marketing to you, a Canada James, and you might say, well, I, I, I really don't need that type of person. I might ask an insightful business question or two and uncover that you need not Y, but, but X. And I will ask you, well, tell me a little bit more about it. And, and you will. I'll take some notes. And then I kind of segue into, well, James, what's exciting uh, for you about what you do and your role in the company and the company? So I get the hiring manager to tell me a little bit about themselves. Yeah. Then I will say, well, let me ask you a question, James. And this is the key phrase I have found that segues are, are sets the foundation for the conversation. I'll say, all right, James, uh, let me ask you this. Is this a position on which you can afford a mishire? Mm -hmm. And it, it's a rhetorical question because uh, 99 out of 100 times they're going to say, well, of course not. Yeah. And then I, I learned to ask when they say, no, I, I can't afford a mishire on this, I will ask, if it was a mishire, how would this impact you personally? Right. So now we're trying to get to that emotional aspect of it. And then I will ask, may I propose a different process than what you are probably used to? One that will save you uh, probably uh, the difficulty of, of making a, a mishire and bring you the opportunity to hire differently and hire better. Are you open to that conversation? Yeah. And every person has said yes. So what I intro did by validating the process, I had confidence right after the first of the year to, to ask the question of everyone. Inside, no, I can deliver. And that's been the turning point that all of a sudden here in 2017, guess what? I'm having fun again. That's so that's, uh, that's kind of the journey. 
I can hear the fun of your voice, but you, you talk about the when you say to your clients about the impact. So tell me about the impact on your business uh, in terms of the billings and also on you personally. Seems this is a question that you ask your clients. And on me personally, the fact that now a, I know on these six searches I deliver, I'm going to get paid. So it's freed my mind up from the um, some days almost a panic attack coming into the office. Who's going to go dark on me today? And uh, now I don't have to worry. I can really dig in to a candidate's background, yeah. bring higher quality talent to my client, because if the candidate goes dark, it doesn't matter now. I'm going to get paid. Yeah. So it's brought the confidence, the joy back to the business. It's allowed me to truly become a consultant yeah. to my client again. give you a quick example. Uh, and, and I could have never done this under a contingent model. I had a, a, a vice president of sales wanting to bring on three people. So that's three of the six engaged searches right now. And he said, you know, Skip, it's going to be almost overwhelming to me to bring on three people at the same time. Any suggestions? And actually, I, I did have some, and that enabled me to now become a consultant to my client. I said, well, here's what some of the things are we want to find out from the candidates, and we want to set some expectations up front and a sales process up front. Yeah. And so I asked him, what sales model do you guys follow? And so we began to talk about how to get candidates engaged with that sales model early to determine could they be a good fit. So so financially, I now know I've got six searches I'm going to fill. Uh, combined, that's um, give or take. Um, I, and I've tried two models on this. One is still percentage of base salary. The other is a fixed fee model. I, I think both work. It depends upon the search. So it might be a $20,000 flat fee, or it still might be 28%. And that's the other thing. I was still groveling down at the 20, 22, 23% level. I'm now asking for 28%. In, in my model today, what I finally discovered over this year and a half journey, it may not apply to everyone, but what I've discovered is it's 28% of base salary, or if it's a flat fee, it's going to, that flat fee will be calculated up on 28% of the midpoint. I'm asking for 3K to engage the search, yeah. write the position profile, do the McQuaig job survey where we're benchmarking the culture of the client. Okay. 2K when we provide the short list, so now that's up to 5K, and then the balance is due within 15, net 15 of, of start date. And so what, what, what impact will Intro have on your business long term, do you think? What's, what's that going to do for you? Well, my, uh, my wife and I uh, would like to retire in three to five years, uh, move out to the western United States. Still probably uh, won't get out of the business, but would like to be able to do the business from, from anywhere. And I now can see, in fact, we have a, a young man coming in this afternoon to interview with us who might join our team. So I see the impact now of being able to f move into our new net, hire people, yeah. give them a true platform for success, grow the business, and then leave in three to five years with maybe an operations manager running the business here and have a witty income coming in after after we leave. Yeah. Oh, so, so, so. Now, what, what about, you know, we've spoken about, you, you've told me a lot there about in terms of talking to clients and engaging them. What's been the reaction from candidates so far? Ah, uh, that's, uh, thanks. Um, that was actually my biggest fear, I, I must tell you, is um, going back to uh, reservations about iintro. was after I saw it and everything, I'm going, okay, I think I can see, and obviously subsequently have experienced, clients will engage with this. The clients like it. So that's where, uh, uh, through experimentation, I... Uh, I will ask a candidate this. I always do uh, the two interview calls. So the first is a brief introduction. If things go well on that 15 to 20 minute call, I then set up a more in-depth interview with them, you know, 40 to 60 minutes where we take the complete candidate data sheet. Yeah. One of the questions I ask them in this is I'll say, James, let's say for a moment 
you have a chance to sit down in front of a client. If they're engineers, if they're chemists, if they're salespeople, I just kind of frame it in their uh, world, if you will. So uh, a chemist, let's take a chemist, for example, a PhD research chemist that I was engaged with this past week for one of my retained searches. I said, uh, I, I said to, to him, Alan, imagine you're sitting down in the conference room, and just like you would with your, your R&D, you got a chance to do a, a PowerPoint presentation. But in this case, the PowerPoint presentation is on you. And you have a chance to put up a one slide PowerPoint presentation with three bullet points. These three bullet points are the only three pieces of information you can communicate to the hiring team on who you are. If verbally you can't speak and in writing you can put down just three bullet points, what are the three most unique differentiating factors that you could communicate on this slide to the hiring team? And we work through those three together and we create them. Well, guess what? Those become the three key facts. Then on the three key competency questions, I've learned to present it this way. I said, now as we go into the interview process, it's sort of like back when you took your final exams, you actually get a cheat sheet ahead of time. Uh, our client, and working with the client, we've created three interview questions. You know, there's going to be a, a number of interview questions, yeah. but there are three interview questions you're going to get asked in this interview. Well, what the client has done is you're going to get to see those up front and have a chance to actually sit down, think through them, and write your answers down. So you're almost getting a chance to do a, a pre-interview before the interview or take a, you know, a cheat sheet to the exam. Uh, how does that sound? And they go, well, that's pretty cool. And then the video, there are two components of the iIntro video process. I, one is asking them some questions and they respond. I'm not doing that. I'm using where people can create a 75 to 120 video introduction of themselves. And so I sat down and created one that I did. And I'm using that as an example to give candidates. And I make it soft. I make it voluntary. I don't make it a have to. And I learned to position it this way after one candidate told me this. So I'll share this with, with everybody. After she did the video, she said, you know what, Scott? Wow. I'm a tennis player, and I used to have my husband videotape me with the, with the cell phone when I played tennis, and I'd go back and look at it to study wings. Yeah. I have never considered doing that in, prepar in preparation for an interview. So after doing this, I was able to look back over it, saw some of my mannerisms and everything, and said, I didn't like what I saw, and said, I go, I know I'm doing that in meetings and everything, Said so, I was able to uh, self correct on a few things just like I used to with my uh, tennis swing. And in fact, after that exercise, I continued uh, to do some practice interview questions where my husband would ask me a question. I'd practice the answer on video, and boy, it got me more ready for the video than anything else I have ever done in preparation for an interview. So, James, that's how I've learned that for the candidate, it's a lot of work. Yeah. How do we get their buy-in? And now my candidates are actually excited, and I'm getting testimonials from my candidates on the benefit it's bringing them, and my clients are loving it. And that's kind of, again, the 60-day journey I've been on on that. Well, that's, Skip, that's fantastic. I mean, what you've, what you've done over the last uh, 45 minutes or so is really um, give a, a really good introduction, tell us a bit more about yourself, and obviously, you know, the, the highs and lows. But also you shared with um, the listeners today a little bit more about the uh, process that the intro system does and for those of you who can see the screen you can see that uh, if you want to book a demo to learn a little bit more about um, how the intro system might help you you can just follow that link there if you're not viewing the screen it's www.i-intro.net forward slash thank you and that'll take you straight to our booking page where you can book a demonstration at a time that's convenient for yourself and go straight into our diary. But Skip, what would you say to owners or recruiters of recruitment businesses and search businesses who aren't using iIntro? I would say 
if you have any interest in, in getting paid up front, the engaged and retained model, to do two things. First, get David Perry's book on hiring greatness. I mean, it, it, it's, it's our training manual on how to do retain search. Yeah. And then um, sit down with Plumman or, or James over the, the telephone, get them to do a demo, and, and see if it's right for you. Sure. Now, a rhetorical question. Uh, would you recommend I intro to other firms? But I want you to answer it. <laughs> the answer is is this. If, it, if, if you love, you know, there, there are certain positions and certain levels that this is clearly not the right model. But if you have any desire to become that true consultant to your candidates and your clients, then you owe it to yourself to, to check this out, and I would highly recommend it. If you have the interest in executive search, higher level search, absolutely. <laughs>